Hi, I'm Marcus with the IndieMusicLab.com. So last week, we started this three-part series on recording, producing, and mixing a simple guitar vocal in the style of Bon Iver. And last week, we talked about simply recording it, getting the guitar, getting the vocal recording down. And in this week's video, I'm gonna show you how to produce and mix your guitar or guitars, depending on how many tracks you have, and really make them fit well. And I'm gonna show you a couple really cool things you can do to add some fullness and some depth to what might otherwise sound like lifeless acoustic guitar tracks. We don't want that, so I'm gonna show you how to infuse your guitar tracks with some extra color. So let's jump in the box, and I'm gonna show you here in Studio One how to get the sound. Follow along in any DAW, by the way. Does not matter, Logic, Ableton, Studio One, whatever. Everything applies to any DAW. So let's jump right in. All right, so here's what this song sounds like with everything in. This my excavation to... Right, this is just the Bonnie Bear remake that I did of the song Stacks. And then here are the acoustic guitars soloed. Days come wrong. So that's the main guitar. And then I have a lower volumed second guitar that's layered in. And then together. So I'm gonna walk you through all the processing and the plugins and how you can go about mixing this type of guitar sound. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is the routing of where things are going. So here are the two individual, let me actually color code these so they're the same because these don't need to be different. So let's just do something like that, there we go. These two guitar tracks are being sent to a bus, which a bus is essentially just where you can, can group tracks and then you can process them on that level before they go to the main output. So I've got essentially the same plugins on the individual tracks here, but then on the bus channel, I do have a plugin and I'm also sending this bus channel to some reverb. So we'll get into that. But first, let's focus in on the individual tracks here and let's just look at this acoustic guitar track. So I'm gonna turn off all of these and we'll go one by one and I'll walk you through what I did on this acoustic guitar sound. So that is with nothing on it, that is exactly how it sounds recorded into the DAW. Now the first plugin I used here is an EQ and it sounds like this. There's without it and then with it the tone got a bit darker, right? And this is important because what is the overall tone? What are, what are we going for in this type of song? It's a bit more of a dark, a warm vibe, right? And so we wanna keep those types of words in mind when we go about to EQ it. There's not a blanket, one size fits all EQ. And so as you can see here, the biggest moves I did are up in the high range. I made a five dB cut here around 5K. And then I also made a 4 dB cut on the high shelf here. Now, I understand if you're just used to using a visual EQ like the stock EQs that come with your DAW, this might look and feel a bit unnatural to know exactly what's happening. So to help you with that, I'm gonna actually show you approximately what those EQ moves look like on a basic stock style EQ, on an EQ that looks like this. So that would be something along the lines of, say this and this. So this is about what it would look like on an EQ like this. It's this type of move. So that's the first plugin we're using there. We're shaping the tone with some EQ to really warm up that sound. Now the next plugin is another instance of the fat channel here, and this time we are using it for the compressor. Now this is an 1176 style FET compressor here. It's Studio One's version. Um, and this type of compressor has a very fast attack and it works great for volume control, especially to tame dynamics and then make the overall track, you know, more in balance. And so it's really chopping off those loud parts, as you can see here on this meter. And so what I did is I just adjusted the input volume of this until, you know, here it's not compressing, but then there it starts to compress. So it was here, there is where it was. And then you can adjust the output volume so that it about matches the input volume here. Now this is with this exact plugin again, 
it'll depend on the compressor that you're using. It might look slightly different, but I'm a huge fan of these FET 1176 style compressors uh, when I want just really solid compression, especially to tame the dynamics so that there's less variation from the quietest part to the loudest part. You know, it kind of brings everything into a more balanced place. So finally, here's what the guitar sounds like with that compressor off. And here's with it on. It's very subtle, nothing crazy happening, but we are sort of taming those louder peaks and bringing everything into a bit more of a balanced state. So what we've added so far is some EQ and some compression on that acoustic guitar. Now, this is where a lot of beginners don't know where to go next, or they might go immediately to like a reverb or some other very obvious effect. But one of the most overlooked types of plugins, especially for really almost anything, drums, guitars, vocals, is once you've added some nice EQ and compression, add some type of saturation or distortion to your track. And that is what we are doing here. So I went with RC20, one of my favorite plugins. And so here's what it sounds like without RC20, and then I'll turn it on. I'll mention it over and over again. I'm not the type of person who always recommends plugins, like get this plugin. I, I'm not a plugin hype person generally. However, there are a few exceptions and RC20 is the exception that I just harp on over and over. If you are able to get this plugin, please buy it because it is, I use it on literally every song, not just that, I use it on like every five tracks it seems. It's just a fantastic plugin. Now, the biggest thing that's happening here is some saturation, some distortion with this part of RC20 here using this tube distortion. But we are also adding in a bit of vinyl, a bit of wobble, although on a very, very low level, and a bit of magnetic over here. And then these two knobs are turned off. Makes such a difference. And then finally, uh, I threw an EQ on here. And this little notch here was for, I guess I was hearing a frequency in the super low range, maybe the low string was ringing out a bit too much. And so I just notched that out. And that's just something you can do, especially for acoustic guitar performances uh, or really live instruments where you might have an inadvertently, you might have a low string that's really ringing out. And so one of the ways that you can tame that or fix that, or at least mitigate it, is by doing a really narrow cut using the cue here because there it's you know wide that isn't really going to help it because then it's just going to lower the entire it's just going to make it sound thin so we really want to narrow the cue and notch out that frequency so we find it yes it was that frequency and i just notched it out whoops wrong wrong thing and then also made a slight cut up here in the 2k range but that's only about 1 to 2 db so nothing crazy going on there i just thought it sounded yeah it's just one of those little subtle things that i added in there now so that's the main guitar that is the primary guitar that you hear now the next track i want to talk about is that complementary guitar and that sounds like this so this is what it sounds like recorded in right so let's come over here and then we did a lot of the same things. I used the same chain. I basically copied over the exact same chain, but then I went into the individual plugins and made some adjustments. And the reason I did that is because one, I used the same acoustic guitar because it's the only one that I have on hand right now. But if I had used a different guitar, I maybe wouldn't have had to make any adjustments. I could have just copy and pasted the exact same plugins because we already are getting that differentiated tone because we're using a completely different acoustic guitar. But if you are using the same instrument, then you wanna, when you're doing doubles like this, you wanna create some difference between the two. And so I EQ this slightly differently. Um, although the main difference is on the super high, on this high shelf cut here, I think the other one was at minus four and this one is closer to minus 12. So here's without the EQ. So it's much brighter and then it just darkens, it's like a blanket is covering that guitar. And then the next plugin, 
just like on the original one is a compressor. However, I switched it up just to see if it could create a slightly different sound than what was on the first guitar. I just used a different compressor and I went with the classic compressor here in Studio One. And, but overall, it's compressing about the same amount. It's very subtle compression. It's just kissing that guitar on occasion, not on every strum, as you can see here. It's just really taming those louder parts. And then again, just like on the first guitar RC20, however, I'm using different settings. And for the first one, we used a tube distortion. For this version of RC20 on the second guitar, I browsed through and I went with the iron distortion. And again, that's just to create a different sound so that they don't both sound exactly the same. And then finally, an EQ at the end, which is much more of a drastic EQ, as you can see. And that is to really make this second guitar track feel like a subsidiary component and not the primary component, because that first guitar is the primary guitar that I wanted the listener to hear. And then this second guitar is really acting as a filler. It's acting as a piece of the puzzle to add some fullness and some depth to the overall song, which is important for this type of song because there's not that much happening. So even just adding one extra guitar track that's tucked down, that's EQ'd off, that's filtered off, even at a low volume, that in of itself can add so much fullness and depth just because there's just nothing else going on, right? So as you can see here, pretty crazy EQ moves, ruled off a bunch of low, ruled off a bunch of high, even did a mid cut as well. So there's without it. And then that is what we have. So if we then put that up against the original guitar, that is our guitar arrangement and production on the individual tracks. Now, again, as I mentioned before, I'm sending these two guitar tracks to a guitar's bus right here. And then there's one more plugin that you, by all means, you do not have to use this plugin, but especially when I'm doing remakes, I love using this plugin because it helps me sort of educate myself on what does the original sound like. So I'm using Ozone 9 here. This is basically a mastering suite software, but one of the cool features of it is this match EQ plugin inside of Ozone 9. And what this allows you to do is record a reference. And in this case, I recorded in, I captured a clip of the original Bonnie Vare song, Stax, and I captured it. So now it has the EQ curve of that song. And then what I did is I played this song. I captured this version of it, my version. And then the point was to see, okay, what is the disparity between the two? And then close the gap if you want to. So in this case, here's what it sounds like with Match EQ here's without it. It's a huge difference, right? Because it's scooping out all of this. Now here, if, if we do this, see, this is what the original stacks frequency range or the EQ curve looks like if we were to try and apply it exactly, which obviously there's not a point in doing that, but we want to smooth it out and just kind of get a general sense of, okay, what is the difference? Okay, so it's something like this. We'll smooth it so that it's nothing, none of those crazy spikes, and then you can adjust the amount. Like this, just ease it in. Go all the way, or just something like that. So it's, this is just one of my favorite plugins to use, especially again for remakes, and just for my own ear training, my own education. So if you're able to get a plugin like this, it can be really helpful because it helps you to understand patterns because the more you use it, you understand what the songs that you love, what is the EQ curve of those songs. And um, and in this case, because there are parts of the Bonnie Vera song where it's just the acoustic guitar, I could capture just that acoustic guitar and then even put that up against my acoustic guitars. And then finally, there's one more thing we're doing here on these guitars, and that is we are sending both of these guitars here from this bus to a reverb using a send, and it sounds like this. Now, this is the same reverb that is also on the vocal, so we'll dive into this reverb in next week's video when we talk about the vocal production and the vocal mix on this. But I'll just walk you through very quickly what this sounds like and what it looks like here, what the chain is. So on a return track, 
or effects channel, send, however you call it. The point is you have your dry track and then you have your bus channel, return track, effects channel over here. And then you're sending a copy of your, in this case, guitar track to that reverb so that we still have the dry guitar track stays the same, but then we blend in some reverb to it. So here is just a room reverb using Valhalla Vintage Verb. And start, use what you have. Use any type of room reverb you might have and it'll sound good, um, especially because it's a pretty subtle move. Now there's a couple key things that I'm doing here. One is an EQ. So I'm rolling off a bunch of high end because if I don't do that, there's too many high frequencies popping. And we don't need that. We don't need all that high frequency reverb information. We want the this range up here, we want to feel very dry and we want to hear the clarity of the guitar and also the vocal. Um, so that's why we did that, as well as a roll off of the low end, which is just super standard because you don't need all of that buildup in the bass on the reverb channel. And then finally, the third plugin on this reverb chain is a sneaky, sneaky, cool effect. And that is simply to make that signal more mono. So without it, it sounds like this. This is just regular stereo. Here. But then if we make it more mono, it focuses the tone. So what we're doing here is instead of the reverb being stereo, so let's say this is max stereo, it's now doing this. So when you hear it in your headphones, it sounds like the reverb itself, the reverb signal is in a bit more of a tunnel, a focused lane, if you will. And it's it just sounds really good because it also helps whenever you're panning, which I'm doing some slight panning on these. I did forget to mention that, so I'll mention that now. The first guitar, I'm panning 15 left. And then the secondary guitar, I'm panning 25 right. And that might sound like unequal, but it's actually quite balanced because the left guitar is louder. And so that one's closer to the center and the right guitar is not as loud. So it actually balances out more so than if I were to go 25 left, 25 right. Because since I'm only using two tracks and they're not of equal volume. So I kind of did some maneuvering to get that pan in the right spot. But all that to say, that is just a cool little tip that I want you to have here at the end is when you are using sends like this and you have a reverb channel on a return track, see what it sounds like. Try putting some type of plugin on that chain that can make the reverb signal itself a bit more mono or stereo for that matter. But just a mono reverb sounds so cool on so many applications. So I did want you to have that as just a little bonus tip here at the end. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and play this song from start to finish so you can really get a feel for it and get to hear everything that we've been working on throughout this video. And before I do that though, I do wanna let you know that I have a free guide. It's called the seven steps to a killer indie song. If you've ever wanted a step-by-step -step plan to write, produce, mix an indie song from start to finish, you're gonna love this guide. So I'll leave a link in the description. It's 100% free. So be sure to check it out before you head out. All right, so here is what this song sounds like. Enjoy. This my excavation into days come on. Everything. Yeah. 